forgot what time my live was. We haven't done it in so long, I forgot. Alright, I look all crazy. I just got home not that long ago. It's a good thing I remembered. <sighs> Sorry. Not that late. My signal's wonky. Okay, there he is. Okay. This is doing weird stuff. Ah! Hello there. What's up? Not much. I, I like just walked in the door a little ago. I'm doing all this stuff and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, our life. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. I, I woke up, I ran the dog downstairs to go use the washroom, and now, now, and, and, and now we're ready. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, I was like, let me text him real quick. He probably like, where is she at? I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, totally forgot. I was totally lost track of time today. It happens. It does, it does. So how are you, my friend? I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Good. Good, good, good. How's my girl over there? Is she there? Hi, Jess, wherever you are. <laughs> She's still in bed. <laughs> well, yeah, it's about that time. <laughs> you guys but, uh, she'll, she'll be up soon, probably. Yeah, she will. I, I know usually when it's funny, she stays up late. So I do the same thing. I'm a night owl. Yeah. We are we are night owls here. Yep. So I'm glad we're back. You know, yeah. people were excited that for us to be back, you know, with our mental health check-ins. But, you know... We were. T I was taking a little break. Jared was taking a break. We had busy schedules, things going on. So, sorry, but we're back. We have returned, barely. <laughs> we have. We have. We have made it back. Um. So. Um. Ask you what we're doing. Glad you're doing good. How has everything? I don't know if like I, you know. I still feel the world is kind of wonky, especially with mental health. But you know, mine's been kind of up and down. How's yours? How's yours been? Up and d up and down is the is the perfect description of things uh, of late. Uh, you know, there's good days and there's bad days, and that's just how it is with with mental health and and stuff right now. There's days that days that feel feel great and feel like the world's you know slowly getting back to normal, and then there's days where it's still like, wow, this is really really weird and uh things just uh don't don't really feel right um but you know like i've said like mental health last few months have just been up and down um a lot of up and down as you can see um if anybody in chat is curious slash as you can see i'm missing like, a chunk of my eyebrow um uh long story short i have no idea why but we're assuming it's stress I just got so stressed at some point that a part of my eyebrow was like, yep, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that does happen. I know somebody, uh, a, a friend of mine, he, all of a sudden he like at the bottom, like right around here, he went like this and like a big bowl of hair came out and he just had a bald spot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's no other reasonable explanation, um, but I'm just missing a chunk of my eyebrow now. So, hello. It gives you character. Yeah. There you go. Gives me character. Well, a lot of people also who um, I have a friend who has a scar in stitches. A lot of the t people I know they do. They have like spaces right in their eyebrow, but it's because they have a scar, or because yeah. they got stitches there, so it never grew back. So you're not the only one that has a little space in your eyebrow, so it works. Yeah, it's it, it's it's all it's all good. It just adds character. <laughs> just say, oh man, I got this brutal battle, and I had mad stitches in my yeah. Eyebrow. yeah just, you know, I had these terrible acne scars. You just... <laughs> But, yeah, you know, it's been, like, up and down. The world still feels uh, a little weird to me, too. Um, it, it's, like, I mean, I work in healthcare. So, it's, it's like, I work at Cedar sinai Medical Tower East, which, I mean, obviously, you know Cedars. But, yeah. you know, um, for everybody, that doesn't, that's, like, one of the most popular hospitals in Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. And um, I don't work at the hospital, but I work in one of the medical towers for a private doctor. And, you know, it's... I love it. And it's just, it's something I started, I, it's a new, it was about four months ago, I started working there. And, you know, it's just weird being around the hospital and all that type of stuff. And then, you know, they, we don't ever stop in healthcare, no matter what's going on. Yeah, Because um, it's medical, you know, necessity and, and, but yeah, I agree. Like, 
the world still feels weird. Like I'm walking around and like I have my mask up and I'm outside and I'm like, I'm so used to it because at work in healthcare, you have to wear uh, The other day I was taking, taking the dog on a walk and um, I, I, I go into like Starbucks and I'm getting myself a coffee and and then we leave of course i have my mask on the whole time but we leave starbucks and i take i take my mask down to to drink my coffee and i realized that it felt like there was a part of my face missing i was like this is so strange having my mask down like i feel wrong having my mask this doesn't feel right and i think i it's so i'm so used to wearing it when i go out now that it just feels like a part of a part of me and uh, it's uh strange to say the least yeah, it is. And I get that. Because I was when we were just out, I kept going, why am I keep putting my mask on? Like, There's nobody around. Even when we were inside, it was like there was nobody around. So I usually I'll pull it down. Even yeah. if it's the store, like if it's very like nobody's and it's not crowded, I take it down. I just got my second booster because I'm immune compromised. So I was able to get it. Um, but and it was been like eight, nine months out since the last one. So I figured it's going to be like the flu shot where you get it every year. I mean, so, um, but yeah, it's like, I'm so used to it at work, we, like in healthcare, you almost like never take it off. So except when I'm in this. So it's just so weird that even now when I'm out, I'm like you said, it's so it's like, you feel like it's a part of your face. And it's like, even outside, I normally don't wear it. But now I'm starting to like, I forget that it's on my face. And then yeah, like, it's it, to, for me, it's the new normal. But seeing people without masks, like it, it's, it's both, it's refreshing seeing people without masks, but it's also weird seeing people without masks. So it's like, it's one of those things where it's, um, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's weird to see things slowly becoming normal again. Um, I saw a question that I wanted to answer real quick. Yes, I am vaccinated. I actually, I got my booster, um, my first booster, I think about maybe one or two months ago, um, yeah, one or two months, one or two months ago, uh, some, something like that. Um, so I remember just texting. Who's Verily. Um, but um, but yeah, um, it's weird finding finding a normal, finding a new normal. It's uh, it's definitely it's it's definitely been weird. Um, it's had a lot. Of, there's been a lot of ups and downs, and at, at, up in up in Washington, um, west aren't wasks. Masks aren't like mandatory anymore, so yeah. there's like it's like fifty fifty whether you'll see someone in a mask. Um, and it's so funny. I, I have this like purple mask that I wear everywhere because why not, right? Yeah. And I'm in the hallway of our apartment complex, and this guy stops me and he says, uh, "Don't like the mask, but nice purple." Okay. Weirdest interaction I've ever had, like. Thanks, man. I don't know. How do I respond to that? Um, oh, weird world. I'm telling you. Yeah, it, it, we're 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 living in a in a weird age. We're living in a weird age, and it's just it's weird because uh, I think uh, we're planning on going um, going back to Disneyland soon because it's been it's been a while. Um, it's been a while since we've been to Disneyland, and. Um, it's just gonna be weird going back, seeing seeing things and like mass wearing masks again, and and seeing who is everyone gonna be wearing masks? Are we gonna be the only ones wearing masks? Like, are masks mandatory there still, or like? I I don't the, the one here here right? Yeah, yeah, in Cali, in Cali. Yeah, no, I mean, I went to I mean, when I went to Universal Studios in December because my uncle came down to visit for like an early Christmas, and we all went. Um, Topaz, we we all we all we, we yep. all went. And it was mandatory to show your vaccine and wear the mask in Universal. In Disney, it's not. I think the way they do it now is if you're vaccinated and boosted, you don't have to wear it indoors or outdoors. But if you're not vaccinated, you do have to still wear it indoors. But if they're not checking, that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So they might be checking. I don't know. I have not. I've been. We've been talking about it, too, because we haven't been to Disney, yeah. to Universal, but we haven't been to Disney yet, or California's Adventures. Like, I haven't been there since the last time before the pandemic, when it was normal. It's just weird. Like, you do normal things, but it still feels weird. I almost feel like I had so much anxiety and PTSD and depression during the pandemic, and it hit, I went backwards. But then, like, when you're going back to normal, you feel like you should be happy, but you're also weirded out. And 
like anxiety. It's all bitter. It's all bittersweet. It's all really, really bittersweet. It like feels good, but it feels wrong. And it's like, why? Why is this? Why? Why has this pandemic done this to us? Yeah. 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 Like, it's almost like you're weirded out and have anxiety of going back to normal. So it's almost like you're going backwards. It's so. I mean, this is what I. This is. What, this is what I'm used to now. Like I'm being being inside. I mean, I was always a little bit of a hermit, but like. Being on lockdown, which we're not technically fully locked down anymore, but being in lockdown is what I got used to. It's, that is is the normal for my in my head now. So it's weird going back to something that isn't that all the time. It, it's also nice though. Like it is, it's really nice being able to. It's really nice to be be able to take the walk out. Walk. I can English. <laughs> I swear. Take the dog out every day on a walk. Get myself yeah. a coffee, and then just kind of like drink my coffee on a, on a walk with the puppy. Like, that's nice. Yeah. And it's something that uh, is, uh, it's something that, 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 that has definitely helped me with my mental health. Like, just, it's a, it's a habit with her to take me on a daily walk. Oh, how's she doing, my friend over there? <laughs> oh, look at the two ways I almost bought one of those. Hi, baby! <laughs> oh, we- you, yeah, you want to say hi? <laughs> Bubby. She thought I was so yeah, she's still but she's only ten months. They like, wanted to come and now you're like running away. They're both they're both like ten months then. Because Sylvie <laughs> Sylvie's about ten months now too. Yeah, because I think you got right around when I adopted, I think you guys got your puppy. Yeah, we got him. We got him around the same time. Yeah. So yeah. Except yours is much bigger. <laughs> Mine's <big. laughs> Yeah, Sylvie Sylvie's getting there. She's so cute, though. When she, oh my god, when she was a puppy, she was adorable. But like, she's still so cute. She still got that little baby face, even though she's bigger. But dogs really help with. I mean, Lucia has been like a saving grace for me with mental health. I mean, yeah. like you were saying, Sylvie. Sylvie's definitely helped a lot with mental health, though. Taking care of taking care of Sylvie or Sylvie and the two cats, the two cats and a dog, bit much. Because the cats work together to wi- two cats the two cats work together to rile up the dog, and then the dog gets hyper, and the cats get hyper, and then it's just it's a lot. It's a lot. I've, I it's it's funny. I've been I've been slowly getting back to streaming because that's kind of my way of 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 coping and and dealing with mental health a lot of the times because it's just my way of of interacting with people and socializing and and sort of um you know chatting but uh it, it's been it's been it's been difficult there's been some nights where i'm like okay guys i'm sorry i gotta end stream because the cats are going crazy and the dog is going crazy and i gotta i gotta stop one of them from doing something and <laughs> it's uh it's uh you know it, it it is it is what it is but it's fun and uh you gotta love them you gotta love the animals absolutely no i mean it's the same situation here as you know we have lucia and then two cats so it's yeah. like they're very neurotic, but they're, they are, they're, ner- they're a little neurotic, but they're fun, but yeah. they're like, they're like terrified and then they're fine. Like it, their moods are like all over the place and it's hilarious because I love messing with one of them, Henry, and then Lucia loves them. They're like her best friend and she'll, she'll like make a crying sound when they don't want to play because they're moody. It's just hilarious. Dovi and Lily are best friends. They are, they, yeah. they love it. Midnight, not so much. Midnight doesn't get along so much with the dog, but yeah. uh, but Lily, Lily, and Sylvie are um are best friends most oh, of the time. That's cute. Yeah, I mean, animals are so good for mental health, and I always tell people when they kind of ask me what I do, and I'm like, besides nature and like things like you said, just like kind of going for a nice walk, get coffee, get out of the sun. Take, going going on a daily walk is something that like has really helped me. Or I mean, I obviously have to take Sylvie out more than once a day, but like. Going on a couple walks a day, getting some fresh air, kind of getting out of my usual headspace, it yeah. helps. It helps a little bit. And have it for me personally, I, I'm i a very, like, not routine-based person, but routine-based person. There's a few set things I need to do every day to, like, make my head go, okay, this is okay. Like, get up, wake the dog, get coffee, come home, play some games eat some food, stream. Like, those are the things, that's the checklist that I have to get through to, like, make my head go, okay, today was a successful day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I think we all have that type of 
you know, in some capacity, because I'm like you, I have kind of like that too. It's like you have, it's it's like a, yeah, like you say, it's like a daily routine. Like you have to do certain yeah. things you feel like to function. Yeah. As weird as it sounds. But, um, but yeah, with, with, with mental health right now, it's just been, it's just been lots of ups and downs and trying to be more open because I, I am not good with being open. Uh, I'm I'm very much so not a uh, open person. I struggle with kind of. I don't want to put my problems on other people. And hi Sylvie, I don't want to put my problems on other people, and I don't want to to kind of weigh other people down because I know people are dealing with their own stuff. So I I usually keep things to myself. But with with all these ups and downs lately, I think it's really important to to speak up about how you're feeling. Like if you're if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling uh, if you're feeling down, whether whether you're at a low point or a high point, whatever it is, just talk because talking is so important. Being open about about mental health and and whatnot is is super super important. So um, do that, do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, I agree. And I'm kind of this like for years I was really silent, never shared and anything. And then with BKO, I was like. I'm telling everybody to share, and if I don't, yeah. it looks weird. So it's like I started slowly doing videos and little things, like for, and it helped me and it helped others because it's like mentoring and doing those type of things and these type of it helps mm -hmm. us too. But I also recognize that like when if I'm asking people to share their stories, at some point I'm gonna have to, and it is therapeutic and it's freeing. Well, and it's hard though. When you're it, it's hard. And um, it's, I, I understand it's hard. I know it's hard. So I think part of like, I have a, I have a discord. It's like, a, I, I'm sure you may, you may or may not have heard of discord, but it's like a oh, social yeah. server hosting. Yeah. Um, in my discord, I have a, I have a mental health chat. So in the mental health chat, you can just sort of somewhat anonymously, but you can just go in there, type up a message, uh, tell the people on the server how you're feeling and you'll have a whole bunch of people that, that care about you and won't judge you and just want to be there to help you and, and are like, and, and feeling for you. So it's just such a nice place to like go and be like, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling this right now. And it's hard. And today's hard. Um, and it's just, it, it feels nice to be a part of, of several communities where like talking about mental health and, and being, being open and, and being, being a part of things and being, um, being proactive, um, is, is it feels, it feels good. It feels nice. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think it's, I think we need to open more chats like that. And like I said, I think mental health really needs to be more at the forefront. It really messes with your head. And I don't think people realize oh. what a epidemic we're in on top of the pandemic that's another well, yeah, because the pandemic is for so many people the pandemic has 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 made them anxious it's given them anxiety it's kind of it's changed the way their their brains work and i know a lot of people personally i'm i'm personal personally an introvert that likes staying inside but i know a lot of extroverts that have struggled so much with this with with the lockdown and with the pandemic that they've gotten anxious and they've gotten anxiety and they've gotten um kind of a little bit a little bit stir crazy because like this is this is I, for me of course like i said i'm an introvert but for someone who likes going out for someone who who loves adventuring and and seeing things and doing things like it's harder for them and i i totally understand that like and it's important to to be like if if, if you're just dealing with anxiety like recently if it's something that's like new to you and it's scary it's so important to like to like talk about it and reach out to people and and uh, and be open. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> all of that, all of the things. I mean, it's all true, and it's like I know that you know I'm an extrovert, but I can be an introvert. Um, it depends on my environment and who I'm around. But I mean, obviously, I'm an Italian New York. I'm an extrovert. There's no secret there. Um, and I love talking to people and being social and going out. And I was basically being immune compromised, you know, and then so many things that happened before and then um, stuff on top of the pandemic and then the pandemic. Yeah. And thing, Bella, And then like, there were so many things I hit so much major walls that I went all the way back to where like I did almost did, it would seem like I did nothing for my mental health. Like my healing journey from years ago. The, the pandemic has, 
had the, or like the past year or so, have had the lowest lows and some of the highest highs. And it's been the weirdest, weirdest mix of emotions. Over, it's been the weirdest roller coaster of emotions over the past few years. And it's been hard to, it's been hard to keep up because it's, it's that like juxtaposition that is so hard to deal with. Because there's one day where you'll be feeling, uh, you'll be feeling as, as good as you can. And then another day where you're just completely in the dumps and it is terrible. Yeah, it's like, it's, you feel so like, you know, very, it's very manic it, to explain it, I guess, in that, in those terms, like, because you're just, you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here, like, you're all over the place. I would have like a good day. And then, yeah, like you said, you would just, it felt like you hit rock bottom, and you'd be having a panic attack, anxiety attack, you're depressed, suicidal ideation, and people don't realize, I never talked about that. Yeah. From- younger when I had it when I was younger and I know we've talked about it and you've talked about your story a little bit with that and pe- you know people don't realize that kind of doesn't just like go away it kind of yeah. is in your head on and off you know all the time and you kind of just deal with it because it's kind of part of depression PTSD and anxiety and all that stuff so it's kind of like in and out or you like you you had it when you were younger and then you get older and it's you know you're good but there's just so many things like mental health is such an epidemic and it's such a problem. And, you know, a lot of us have bled on so many people because everybody just kind of lost it in the pandemic. So I think that, you know, there needs to be more empathy and compassion and understanding for that. And sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. And that's what I think is sad is that people are kind of just blowing things or people off because they're just like, well, I can't handle this. I can't do that. Or I'm not the, you know, I'm not being there for you the way they should. And they feel bad. And it's like, you don't want them to do that. But at the same time, then you seem needy because you're like, no, no, no. And then you're trying to explain yourself and you're kind of all over the place. And you just seem like a crazy spaz at that point. (laughs) And it's so hard because a lot of the times you're trying to be open and you're trying to talk to your friends, but then you feel bad about it. Cause you're like, I don't want, I don't want to be like putting my problems on you and you're dealing with enough stuff right now. And I feel bad for, 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 uh, for, for, for ranting and, and, and talking about my feelings. But a lot of the times you need to realize that your friends care about you and want to talk about this sort of stuff with you. Like they want you to be okay. Excuse me. Sorry. They want you to be okay. They want you to share. They want to be your friend. They want to be there for you. And um, I think that's something I need to understand. I need to learn that like there's people in my life that want to be there for you, for, for, for me. Here we go. Took a second there. The coffee's kicking in slowly, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I do that all the time, regardless, so don't worry about it. I'm always like, I don't know what I just said. Was that even English? Forget about it. I'm all over the place. It's so funny. The amount of times I trip over my words in a, in a, in a day is just astronomical. I know. I do the same thing. I'm like, okay. And, and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I like, I feel like I can't talk right, but... No, I mean, like, I've, I'm the same way. Like, you know, it's funny. Oh, my God, look how cute. <laughs> look at the pool of toys. Hi, Tilby. Oh, my she, God. Uh, she, that, that pool of toys, she loves it. Um, but she won't get inside of it. She'll just <laughs> she'll walk around the outside of it. We put, we put a bunch of food in there. And she just digs through the toys and finds the food. And it, it to- totally wears her out. <laughs> that's so adorable I you know it, it's the, when they're puppies they're funny and they're just such goofballs I mean Lucia is but <sighs> she just she keeps tearing every toy I, apart that I buy her um I can I, I buy her. everything our couch our clothes <laughs> our our walls our our everything like, she's a menace to society every toy that I buy like yeah. and, some of them she doesn't. But she killed lamb chop. She killed the squirrel. She killed uh, the, chop. the amount of lamb chops that we've lost. <laughs> I bought so many, and she just ripping everything to shreds. But um, yeah, hey, you know the difference. It, Sylvie knows the difference between because Jessica has a lot of a lot of plush. She has a lot of like stuffed yeah. toys, and um, and Sylvie somehow knows the difference between. Her toys and Jessica's toys. She won't. She won't touch Jessica's stuffies. But but when it's hers, they're they're gone, and they're gone. 
See, Lucia won't let me have any of my stuffies. She will just cry and be like, that's mine, and she'll just take it and run. I'm like, that's mine, give it back. <laughs> but, um, take it from her and then buy, buy her something else. And, like, if I still had mine, she'd still be looking at mine. She no. just wants everybody's. She even takes some of the cat stuff. It's hilarious. Oh, but it's, Sylvia, Sylvia will willingly take the cat stuff all the time. Yeah. I mean, Lucia will be like, oh, that's mine. I have it. I play with it. Because the cats sometimes don't play with it. But she'll be like, I'll take it and play with it. Yeah. Um... Animals are great serotonin. Animals, animals are great. If you're if you're struggling with mental health and you have have the capacity and the space in your life to, to have a furry friend, then it is it is it is helped me tremendously. I'm not a dog. I don't I don't I don't love dogs. Like I, I like animals. I love animals. Yeah. But I've always put myself a cat person. Yeah. However, I had no idea how much. Uh, Yes, it's taken. It's it's both. It's both been a struggle and had a toll on my mental health, but also the amount of good it's done for me is just astronomical. Like I feel, I feel a lot better most days because I'm able to to get some fresh air and go out on a walk and 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 have a furry friend that is always there to that wants cuddles. Unlike most cats that are like, you pet me when. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and that's why i love dogs like like you know it's funny because like you know she's a cat person my roommate and then i'm a dog person but i love all animals so like i adore the cats because like i'm like i just love all animals but like there's always a cat person and there's always a dog person and you know so but there it's just it, it's just funny because yeah, I mean, she doesn't eat couch. She she doesn't eat couches or any of that stuff. But she'll destroy her toys like constantly, and stuff like that. And sometimes when she was a puppy, she was eating clothes. But yeah, they do. I mean, sometimes like she makes me laugh so much, or like animals make you just laugh and giggle. And they they it forces yeah. you to go outside. It forces you to be like, hey, let's. You know, I go to. She loves going to the beach. I love going to the beach. So like we go to the beach and we hang out. And I mean, I, I, Bella didn't get to do that in New York. You know, I mean, they have beaches, but yeah. it's not. So, um, but like, you know, I feel the same way you do. Like, you always feel like you're going to be a burden. And then like when you, and that sometimes comes true because sometimes people are really there for you. Like, and like you said, all that stuff. And then there's other people that feel like they can't, or then that friendship kind of goes sideways. And then it's like, oh, I should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah. Or, should have not, you know, and then it's like, so then it's like, you kind of go in and out of not knowing what to do, but it's like. Because you never know how people will react, so there's that fear too, and like that's always been an issue with me. And um, but yeah, like you know, you would think that way because I know, yeah, I mean, I know you're that way because I have to pull stuff out of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, me, Jess, 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 me more have like our big giant conversations. You, I have to pull a little bit more out of. But I'll be like, okay. To be fair, I'm just terrible at texting. Like, I'm just not good at it. Sylvie, can you hear the squeak? Yeah. I mean, Lucia does that all the time. She runs around the house with her squeaky. I, I had no idea that dogs just love sitting there. At least, Sylvie, she will just sit there and squeak a toy for like an hour. She loves oh, it. She won't yeah. stop. And I had no idea that that's something dogs liked doing. Yeah. They just will sit there and squeak. Yeah, that's what Chia does too. She'll stare at us and t- have the bowl, the squeaky bowl, and she's like, gong, 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 gong. <laughs> she's like, oh, just like, chomp, 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 chomp. Oh, that's a burger. I should buy you a burger. Lucia. It is a burger. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, chat. This has gone from a mental health live stream to a to a puppy live stream. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All fairness, puppy live stream is mental health. True. True. <laughs> Helps with. Um. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been, uh, the last year and the last several months have been filled with, with many, many ups and downs. And if, if you're struggling right now, if you're in, if you're in a time of need, like, don't be afraid to reach out and, and don't be afraid to, to talk to your friends and, and to, to find the people that truly care. Because like you were saying, there, there are going to be some people in your life that, that like, don't, aren't receptive and and that's okay because like when you're going through stuff like this that that's when you find your your true friends that's when you find your sort of like 
you're the people that, that truly care about you and want you to be okay. Sometimes people just aren't capable at that moment. And, yeah, that, that, that's a thing too. Like it's one of those things where some people just, they're, um, it's just, it, it's one of those things where you just have to find the right, the right people in your group, the right people in your, in your little community to, to talk to and, and be open with. And, and, uh, that can be a process too, but that is okay because like the people, your friends, they care about you and they want you to be okay. So like talk, be open. I just, whatever. Yeah. No, I mean, there's a thing like, it doesn't mean you don't have to be friends with people, but you just have to know which ones that you talk to in your circles and which ones are more like, okay, I know I can talk to these people or this group and these people maybe don't have the capacity or the capability or they're more busy than the other ones. I mean, like we have, we all have, uh, you know, say a bunch of friends and not all of them are going to, we're going to go to with that type of stuff. Some friends are, we yeah. go to for talks and some friends are different types. Of friends. So I think another thing we'll have to get how to learn it. I know a lot of people that have to learn it and it's just something that I want everybody to understand. Like, it doesn't mean it's not your fault. It doesn't mean you're it. It doesn't mean it's that. That's the big thing. You are not a burden. And, and like, that's the biggest thing that I've had to learn. Uh, like you as a person, all of you, you're not a burden. You are enough that you're not, that you are awesome and fantastic just the way you are. And, and it, it some days are, some days are going to be bad. And those are just bad days. And some days are going to be good. And those are good days. And that's just how it is. Um, there's going to be ups and downs. And um, and that is okay. That's normal. But you are enough. And you're doing good. And just keep reaching for the sky. Keep 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 fighting. Keep pushing forward. Like, it, that's so important. It really is. And, you know, you have to know, like, you know, we're here. We do this because we care. And you know? Well, you know, it helps us as well. And we have our chats and we connect with all of you. And, you know, like I said, you know, Bullies Keep Out is always here for the mentoring. We're actually going to do some Zooms, m- mentoring in groups or individual. We'll have guests, you know, Jared will probably come on one time. We'll all talk and maybe we'll have groups. You know, I'll invite people and we'll have like mental health chats with different topics and stuff. And, you know, that way in case people don't want to do it live or we can't get to every question or, you know. I decided, you know, I used to do the mentoring lives and I was like, oh, maybe I'll start doing Zooms and I'll chat and then I'll have special guests once in a while. And it's it's going to be like a big mental health, like kind of mentoring session where everybody can kind of see faces, ask questions. It's not overflowing where it's going fast and we can't see questions or we don't get to them. And because, you know, it's a little bit more personal. So, you know, we'll probably yeah. do that in the future. You know, um, I'm going to hold the chat has questions or whatever feel free to ask because like answering questions is just something i'm i'm, I'm always happy to do <laughs> yeah i'm looking to see if there's questions in here um how hard was it to handle okay so someone asked if you've ever been bullied and how hard was it to, to, with your mental health at the beginning of covid uh at the beginning of covid um i was a genius not actually genius. Right when COVID started, right as as soon as lockdown began, I was washing dishes and a glass broke in my hand and I and I and I cut open my finger. And so COVID was at like not its peak, but it was at a high point. And I had to go to the hospital to get stitches in my hand. And that was uh that was not a that was a terribly stressful situation and I think it really set off um, my anxiety, but it also totally set off Jessica's anxiety because it was one of those things where we both kind of came to this realization and worry that like, oh, heck, if something were to happen, if either of us were in the hospital, then we couldn't see each other because of COVID. We couldn't, we couldn't be there in the room with each other. And uh, so it's one of those things where like that was super stressful at the beginning of COVID. And of course, we've worked through it and we've gotten past that. But like at the beginning of COVID, mental mental health was hard. And, you know, like I've said, I'm an introvert. I like being inside. I like staying inside. Um, so it wasn't that much of a change. But the hard part was just the little things. Like missing the little things was the hardest part for me. And uh, like going to Target and looking around the store or going somewhere and, and just like getting groceries, like that little thing, missing that was, was, was weird. 
And then of course there's other things like I, I miss I, I missed I missed going to Disneyland because that was sort of a that became like a sort of tradition for for Jessica and I and and uh, that was something like that was where we met and that was where we we went on ninety percent of our dates and then <laughs> COVID happened so uh, it was uh, it's been it's been rough but like the beginning of COVID was definitely hard um, and uh, as for as for bullying. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, uh, I was I was rather small. I was I was a very very small child. So in elementary school, when I was actually in elementary school, um, I definitely I got I got teased a little bit for how small I was. But it wasn't like um, it wasn't like it wasn't in a in a totally like I I had I had I had friends and and whatnot. But I, I did get teased for how small I was. But it helped that I was an actor because, like, people were like, "Oh, you're an actor. You're on TV. That's so cool." Um, so no matter what social group I was in or where I was, people kind of just sort of accepted me um, because they're like, "Oh, heck, you get you can give me Megan Fox's number. That's awesome." <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but as I grew up and as I started um, sp- playing more video games. Cyberbullying is something that I've encountered so much more. And it's so hard because it's all completely anonymous. And um, it's, you know, be playing a game and you're trying to unwind, you're trying to relax, and you have people sitting there on the other side of the, on the other side of the, your, your headset calling you names and, and telling, telling you terrible things. And it just, it doesn't make sense to me because, like, it's and of course it is completely anonymous. They don't know you. They you don't know them. But they're they're telling saying these terrible things to you for no reason. Um, and usually it's because they themselves are struggling with something. And it's so hard because it's like well, it, it's it's just it's such a it's such a a double edged sword. And and dealing with that is is sort of the realization that it's not about you. It's not your fault. You're not. It's it's. They don't. They 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 only know you for the character you are on screen or whatever. Or they're just gonna be like that because they're struggling with their own things in life right now, and that is okay. Um, but it's not you that that is is it. It you are not at fault for for that. Um, and and kind of find giving getting that realization is uh is important. Yeah, and absolutely. And, you know, bullying is, a, a, you know, that's another thing that people don't get, like how devastating bullying is. And they think it's underestimated and it's not talked about enough. You know, we'll talk about, you know, a celebrity in the news for like yeah, six months, but something horrible happens with bullying or cyberbullying or... Well, it's, it's one of the other things and like people talk about it for a week and that's like, okay, let's move on because it's, it, nobody knows. it's hard because I think with the pandemic, like sort of cyberbullying in a sense has gotten so much worse because there are so much people, so many people at home. There's so many people that are, are kind of experiencing it for the first time. And I'm sure it's incredibly hard for them because like, I don't, I don't want to repeat half the things that I've been called playing games. And that's not okay. That's not, it's not okay. And, um, and, uh, I know, I know a lot of people who are experiencing it for the first time and it's, it's, um, it's, it's difficult and, um, it's, it's hard. And, um, I've noticed that, that people that, people that play games, um, like the community, it's not just like, there's so many different kinds of sort of bullying in a sense that it's, it's, it's hard because there's, there's people that sort of, um, there's people that call you names. There's people that, that sort of just try and take control of the situation in a very toxic manner. And it's just, it's hard because, um, it's just, it's all so anonymous. It's all behind a screen and, and there's no, there's no real connection. You don't know them. They don't know you, but it, it, it is, you're both in a compromised situation and it can just take a toll on, take a toll on you. 
Yeah, I mean, like you like yourself. I mean, the things during the pandemic with the cyberbullying, I can't even repeat the stuff that yeah. was pitched to me or I was said or I was called. I was like, I mean, and I see it all the time, all the time because like even with public figures, like they'll put like a DM they got, and I'm reading it, and I'm like, it's so crazy the amount of the amount of like the amount I, of death threats I've seen people get uh, is just oh, especially actors like people people like the amount of, of, of threats and things that have been said to people over the course of this, the, the pandemic and even before the pandemic like long before the pandemic it, it, it's 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 terrible and it's hard and it's 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 not okay <laughs> it's disturbing but, yeah the doxing, the, I mean, I can't even say, like, and then they start involving, like, your family, like, they involve my niece, and, like, you know, it's, like, the stuff that, like, and then people will just be like, oh, you know, just try to ignore it, you know, and all that stuff, but, you know, it's, like, it messes with your mental health, it messes with you big time, and it destroys, it destroys your mental health to the point that people don't understand that that's why bullying is so detrimental because it just, it destroys you. I mean, like I felt so defeated many of times and it was just ridiculous, you know? So, you know, it's just sad. It's just, it's horrific how it's turned into and, you know, Lucia, <laughs> like on the squeaking. Oh Hey, but I'm sure Sylvie will. I'm sure Sylvie will be squeaking her toy at some point again. <laughs> at some point again, too. Lucia's just like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> she's got that ball in her mouth, and once she yeah. gets it. But yeah, no, I mean, you know, people don't realize that the mental health and the bullying is so much. You know, they both go hand in hand, and even if you're not bullied, mental health is an issue. It's just it's everywhere. That's the problem. It's it's one of the things where. It's it's crazy to me because um, it's crazy to me because I feel like a lot of the times the mental health falls on both sides of it too, which is which is hard because a lot of the times not only are you struggling with mental health, but the reason the bully is there in the first place is because they're also struggling with something, and having that uh, that knowledge makes it makes it hard in, in in a lot of sense, and it's it's important that we're we're open for people so that we can sort of. Um, I don't know. It's it's uh it's crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's either that or there's just a lot of anger for whatever reason. So it's either yeah. mental health or anger or or peer pressure or things like there's there's all there's all different reasons because obviously there has to be a reason. We're not born to hate. We're not born to bully. It's something yeah. that a conscious choice to do. Um. So yeah, it's just really. You know, the whole thing is just really sad. And it's like, you know, I, I just, you know, we don't want people to feel like, yeah, it's, you know, I never tell people, yeah, just don't feed into it and ignore it. Sometimes you can, but when they make sure yeah. that they're going to get to you or they trick you and send you like an email and it'll say BKO or it'll say, I need help. And then you look and it's like all this horrendous stuff. Yeah. It's like it's not easy to ignore because they're tricking and manipulating. And then you want to stand up and speak out because it's too much. And they don't stop, and then it's like you ignore it and don't feed into it. But there's always, um, there's always a, a point of like, all right, enough is enough. Yeah. You know? And um, yeah, guys, keep the chat, you know, appropriate and to what we're talking about, you know. And my please. chat is totally, my chat. My chat is like totally broken. I cannot see it right now. Yeah. No, I mean, I see Jess's comments, and I see some of these other comments, and like, you know. We're talking about mental health and bullying. We're not talking about their personal relationships. So, guys, you know, let's not do that because I will take people out of the room if I have to when you're – I mean, we're not talking about anybody's relationship. Um, that's private. Um, but, yeah, it just gets to the point where, you know, you've had enough. And it's like them – you know, it's crazy. What's crazy is the bully – will look like the victim and people will even stand up for that. And then the actual victim looks like the perpetrator yep. and that, that drives me nuts. Because oh yeah. Definitely. And I, and they, and it's even tried to be done to me and I'm like, no, 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 no. Or even people that I've worked with here and I'm like, no, you're not going to turn around and like yeah. try to 
yourself look like a victim and play a victim because that's not that doesn't work. No, it's it's completely that's something that always always really bothers me when they try to do that and they try to turn around on people because that's that's the whole manipulating thing. But and it's so hard because the amount of I feel like the amount of manipulation that is like just there's been in in social media and and influencing there's just been so much manipulation over the past couple of years like people it's just it's hard and it, it's um and and it's it's hard sometimes it's really hard to tell that you're being manipulated and like if you feel that way if you feel like you're being manipulated if you feel like you're being being uh, if you're in some sort of uh, to- if you're in any kind of toxic relationship like it, it can be hard to to realize it and get out of it and like again like if you're struggling with mental health if you're in a situation like that like just it's it's important to be open and 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 seek out people to care and 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 um because there are people that they're that are going to be there for you and there, there's people that that want you to be want you to be okay and want, want to be there for you too yeah absolutely and you know i know our time's coming up um for an hour on instagram but you know I think that's a great point to go on on is that, you know, know your love, Joan, know you're enough, know it's good to speak out and talk and reach out and, you know, do what you can because staying silent is only going to make it worse. And it's going to, yeah. come- I, I, I learned that the hard way. Staying yeah. silent. Hello. <laughs> staying silent. Um, staying silent. And I learned the hard way that staying silent is not, is not good for you. Cause I, when I was first dealing with, with anxiety and whatnot, I, I, um, kind of let it build up and get to a breaking point. And that is not good because I became very temperamental and I was not, I was not acting the way I I wanted to. And there, there's still times where I can let my anxiety build up like way too much and get super anxious and, and let it get to a breaking point where I become someone that I don't recognize. And, and that's not, it's not good. You, you, it, it's important to be open and it's important to talk about how you're feeling and, and, and know that you're not a burden, know that there's people that care about you, know that you're enough and, and just be, be yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with everything you said. And yeah, I, I've not recognized myself a couple of times too. So I totally get it. So Jessie, bye. I'm going to say hi chat with a puppy. Hello. Bye. Um, I just wanted to say that if you're ever feeling suicidal, it's very important to reach out to people or a hotline of any kind. And even if you're feeling like people would be better off without you, that it's better off to just leave the situation than to be dead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a lot to still be around. Yes, so important. Such an important message. Thank you, Jess. Um, it's a very that everybody knows that and yeah you know we want to prevent that as much as we can and it's just it's it's vital and that's why we do things like this so you know um i hope that you know everybody enjoyed us coming back and you know um you know having our first mental health chat back i think it went really great and i'm not happy that we got you know to chat and got these great messages out yeah um, and, and- We'll be back again soon, but like, like every, like we've all just said, just be open, talk, um, be, be, if, if you're struggling with anything, whether it be, um, anxiety, um, depression, uh, suicidal thoughts, just be open, talk to people, uh, talk to anybody. There, there's so many outlets for, for talking to people now. There's, there's, uh, there's apps for it and there's, there's hotlines and there's social media and there's your friends just be open. You are enough. You're not a burden. And and if you're struggling with anything, please, like it, we that we us everyone here, we care about you and we want you to be okay. We want you here. Your friends, your family. We will all want you here. So just be open. And 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 if you need to reach out to us, like I, we're we're always here. Like I said, um, if if you go to to my my Twitch page or whatever, um, you can find a link to to my Discord where I have a mental health chat where we talk about uh, mental health. And if you need need friends, if you need people to play games with or just talk with or just find a community of people that won't judge you and 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 care about you for you, like it, it's so important to find find 
that. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I'm going to let, I'm going to go out with what Jared said, because he said everything that I would have said. And Lucia says, hi. And, you know, I mean, just that exactly what he said, we're, we're all here and we're, you know, we're available here, you know, his, our mental chats, discord, please keep out DM message. We're here. And, you know, that's why we do this. So, I mean, basically everything he said, I'm just reiterating. So we will see you soon guys. And back soon with another chat about mental health or, and catching up with life and, and, and all those sort of things. Like I, I, I love doing these. That's, that's, uh, it's something that's really natural for me because, like, I do stream and I do do, do stuff. So I, I love doing lives. It's something that yeah. I'm comfortable with. And and so um, I, whenever you want to do one thing, I just let me know. Absolutely. No, absolutely. We're going to come back and do these um, often again like we were in the past. So we're back, guys. We're going to be back. So we will see you guys soon. Mwah. I will talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Fare thee well. And, uh, and as always, um, I shall see you next time. Yes. Be good and be safe, guys. Yeah, take care of yourselves. Stay safe and healthy and and good. Yes. Be good.